of success. The guest of this episode is one of the most famous and international interior designers distinguished by his different and very distinctive designs. Our guest is engineer Karim Rashid. Uh, frankly, I, I, I have to say I've, I've designed about uh, now, I don't know, it's got to be close to 4,000 objects, I would say. I don't think of this as a job, and what I mean by that is, it is a job, but it's also something I was destined to do. So I'm here on this planet to kind of contribute in this way, whatever contribution I can do. But with that contribution comes responsibility. And responsibility is for me to do something that's right, you know, for the time. Design is a commercial act. So on one hand, we want to believe that we're these kind of creative genii and we wave a wand and we have an idea and all that. And that's the kind of media dissemination of the profession. The reality is, though, is to be a good designer, I think ideally, it's not about waving a wand and having a great idea. It's about knowing, having so much knowledge about that specific thing or object or space, you know. And when you, the more knowledge you have, for example, if I'm going to design a chair for a company, I visit their factory and I understand the technology and I understand the machinery and I love machinery, I love production and I think I know every machine out there. If you're, the more you know of that stuff, the minute you put pen to paper, that's, that line is informed. You know, it's not a naive idea, or it's not like a personal idea or a selfish idea, or oh, I just like, I love that kind of form or that shape or any of that. No, it's kind of full of, it's in, informed form. The form I put down has come from a bunch of, of, of criteria. Even thinking at that moment when I put the pencil on the paper about the exact polymer or the type of glass or the, you know, all those things. Or thinking about when you design a sofa that, that if you know the knowledge of the way that sewing and pattern making and all that is, that's very different than making a shape, showing a shape to a company and then next thing you know they're like A, trying to figure it all out and B, it kind of possibly is going to lose some sense of essence of what you wanted because you just are not knowledgeable enough. So it's, it's a real profession that's based on a kind of real balance of left and right brain. That you're really a bit mechanical and a bit engineering driven and a bit understanding of those factors. At the same time you are socially responsive and you want, love people and, and want behave, you know, people to kind of embrace and enjoy and experience your things. But a lot of design gets sort of lost in all that. It's a little bit like, oh, the word design. It's, it's a bit sometimes like a game or it's, a, it's, a, it's that you're making some object that has a statement or, or it's a metaphor or it's an analogy or it's, it's a one-liner or it's like, oh, I get it. Styling is when you look into history and copy history and designing is when you look into the future and shape the future. I look at you and the way you're dressed and I can't help but think this is the age we live in. We live in a casual age, right? Very, very much so. So our shoes and our pants, all these things that are around us need to be casual. They need to be softer and more engaging. I mean, my, my mobile phone at this point in time shouldn't be a precious object. It should be a rubbery, soft thing, just like my Nikes are. You know, it should have that same kind of technology. Imagine if tomorrow Nike was making a mobile phone. You know, maybe it has some sort of like, eh, you know, or when you pr touch it or you squeeze it, when I squeeze it, you feel your phone squeezed in your pocket and we can engage each other. You know, I have this, this kind of sensorial, beautiful world that, that's connected, but it's connected in a very seamless way, very casual way. That's the, if you're going to design, that's design today. And design is really, I think, shaping, mar you know, the, this, the, the future of the way we're going we're gonna to go. The driving factor for me is the next chair or next couch or next pen or next watch or next la laptop or anything. I'm always trying to like make it better than the last project. Sometimes some object, and a lot of times you're not really sure why, hits a moment where it seems like the consumer responds very well to it, the manufacturer responds well, the, 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 the press respond well, or the music, you know, it all kind of somehow uh, 
you, you know it, it, it's touching somehow humanity. Let's say I designed a wastebasket called Garbo in 1994-95. And at that time, the plastic wastebasket generally around the world was a pretty banal thing. It was one of those objects that didn't, wasn't really addressed by design. You know? And even in, in, over the years, we're seeing that everything now is being touched by design, even light switches, a thermostat, all these kind of banal objects you know, that are around us. And so when I did it, it was probably the right timing in a way because it needed some sort of push. And then the object itself, the way I designed it, it's really super functional. And the way it comes off the machine, I designed it for the process, for injection molding. So the way I designed it, it makes the plastic flow very fast and very efficient, which made the object then be able, then you could produce more in a machine over a 24 hour period, which means the price point even went down further. So I made a very democratic object that to date, I think they've sold 12, 13 million of them, something, maybe more. And what's nice is it became iconic in the sense that even with all the knockoffs around, somehow the object still sells extremely well. So that, that's one of those. And, and those things don't happen that often, obviously. And, and in a way, you could argue it even becomes more and more difficult for that to happen now because of the way time works. You know, it was a time when things had an opportunity to mature. You know? But today, it's an inundation of market. You know? so it's, and there's a saturation, you could argue, of every typology that we have. So it's a little harder, I think, for, let's say, objects to become so iconic. Rashid was born in September 1960. He obtained a BA in designing from Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada in 1982 and continued his higher studies in Italy. Rashid has created more than 2,000 designs including interior design, fashion, furniture, lightning, art, music and architectural installations. Time magazine named him the most recognized industrial designer in the Americas. Rashid was born to an Egyptian father and an English mother. He now resides in New York and runs a private design studio and has succeeded in entering the field of architecture and interior design such as designing more remote restaurant in Philadelphia and other famous hotels in Athens. His works are on permanent display in 14 of the most famous museums in the whole world, including the Museum of Modern Art in New York and San Francisco. Rashid worked as a teacher of industrial design for 10 years and now lectures at universities and conferences globally on architecture and design. He is considered one of the most famous industrial designers worldwide. Moreover, he is considered one of the leading researchers in the field of architecture related to digital technology. He worked as a teacher of architecture at Columbia University in 1989 and he is the best in dealing with plastic material which appears in most of his works. Therefore, he was dubbed the King of Plastic and has more than 3,000 different designs. He has won more than 300 international awards in more than 40 countries. In 1992, he opened his own company, which is a leading one in the field of developing architectural design and interactive digital designs in New York City. The first major project he designed through his private corporation was the virtual trading floor set up for the New York Exchange. Rashid is also characterized by his genuine simplicity as well as the choice of materials. Therefore, he used plastic, which is considered one of the best lightweight materials that can be formed and manufactured. And due to his preference of plastic raw materials, he excelled greatly in the field of designing industrial product packaging for large companies such as perfume bottles for major companies famous in this field. He also designed sewage networks in New York. You know, after uh, being a pr 
product designer for about 20 years. I, I, uh, I was craving to be able to do a space. And the reason being is I, A, wanted to see, you know, be challenged and see what I can do in it. And, uh, and then second of all, because, you know, if you want to touch in a way a different kind of emotional experience of, of humanity, then space is a different animal than an object, let's say, right? <laughs> But in general, the world's kind of, I re, what I realize about the world is, 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 is what I've struggled with. It's very conservative. You know? The majority of the world is super conservative. And I'm, I'm not, at least, you know, it's hard to be that uh, objective of oneself. But it's not like I'm crazy or eccentric. I kind of know what I'm doing. I'm really pragmatic and I'm really down to earth in a way. But the minute people see things like, you know, decoration and color and, you know, these kind of forms I do and all that, most, most, of the pe most of the world is afraid of this. Because the reality is most of the world sees the past and they're not living in the present. They're living in the past. You know. But really, again, just to reiterate this as a designer, you're, you're really here to be so highly perceptive of the present to in order to shape this future. I, I am on a mission, yes, you know, I'm, and I, I always, I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge believer that we should be embracing the time we live in, like really, like, wow, you know? I got to design the first restaurant for Morimoto, who was like an iron chef, uh, very famous from television, and I got to do his first restaurant, and I did that project, and I was, and I, I you know, I have to say, like, just for the scale, I actually had no idea what I was doing, you know. The, on the human scale, I knew really good, because I knew, understood tables, chairs, all that kind of thing. But in the sense of sort of understanding space planning and making sure a restaurant can really be organized and work, you know, I went through a lot, and I, I, I ended up, Fortunately, I, I guess I realized I was kind of better than I thought I was at doing it. I ended up at a really successful restaurant, which until today in Philadelphia, it's, it's his most successful restaurant. And it, and it stood up beautifully, physically, you know, which, uh, which I was very proud of. And then that kind of, in a way, was a domino effect for me doing a lot more projects. And then I did my first hotel in Athens, Greece, uh, with uh, Dacus Yanu, and I loved that project because uh, it was the first boutique hotel, 54 rooms. And in those experiences, I started trying to do things that uh, kind of created, uh, a little, injected a little bit of humor, but also injected a kind of a positive emotional spirit, which I realize is what I try to do in my objects too in product design, is to make people feel alive and feel very, very happy and, and, and almost like aware, uh, phenomenologically, like aware that they exist. But that, that moment that you feel that you're alive is what I was trying to touch in all my projects. The hotels I'm working on, every one of them, I think about this kind of idea that you're there for a very short period of time, that you should have this experience that you would never have anywhere else. And I love this, is to try to go home, and then you realize that your physical environment you live in is really banal and backward, and you've got to make some changes in your life. You know? So I'm kind of like, in a sense, the impetus, or how can I say, a provocateur, to get people to think about new space about, about the way they could um, be living, let's say. And um, so I decided the interior of the hotel would be Bauhaus 21st century. So I, all I thought about is the fact that if Bauhaus was existing today, as a school, what would his pedagogy do, be and what would it be doing? So I took that approach of it. So there's these kind of nice little experiences as an example is when you get your little object when you enter the hotel, that little object you put it in your pocket and then that little object guides you throughout the entire experience, meaning that it will, when you get on the elevator, it will take you to your floor. When the door is open, the light LED will take you to your room. The door of your front of your hotel will open automatically because it's in your pocket. When you're in your room, the lights say C, blah, 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 all go on because you have this thing in your pocket. So it's like your little, um, how can I say, your, your uh, nucleus for a good experience in a way. And then, you know, so the aesthetics of the space start to speak about the same thing. Aesthetics start to speak about the digital age. And I, I do, in a lot of my work, a kind of 
ornamentation, kind of language, where I try to speak about data, about computers, about what we can do with 3D softwares. Because these are my tools that afford me to do original things. And I'm such a believer, and I'm one of those artists, I always say there's two types of artists. There's the artists that grasp immediately onto new technologies. So we saw that with Xerox art in the 50s. We saw that with video when it started in the late 70s. We saw that, you know, film, blah, blah, blah. So these artists said, oh, new piece of technology, what can I do with it? And then there's the other artists who are more, let's say, conventional or traditional, and technology doesn't necessarily play a role. And I'm that type of artist where the technology is inspiring to me. When I'm sitting here with my staff and I'm on a computer, the things we can do, those are the things that start to inspire and I think are going to shape our world. And we're seeing that as a movement in architecture right now also. We're finally starting to see some buildings around the world that are really um, a result of our 3D tools. You know, so. Anyway, with that said, you know, I, did, I did a subway station in Naples, which is probably one of the projects I'm most proud of with my interior spaces. And, uh, and doing that subway station was really interesting because I started it way back in 2004. And it took about seven, eight years because of just you know, political issues in Naples and things, but it finally got built. So I saw my ideas back from 2004, you know, being realized in 2011 <laughs> or 12. It was quite, quite interesting. But in that whole experience of subway was exactly what I was trying to do, what I would try to do in a hotel or a restaurant or a home, personal home or anything, is that you've got six minutes in that station at the most. So what can I discuss or, or comment on or t how can I touch you or how can I motivate you emotionally and sensorially in six minutes? That was my kind of approach. Um, and, uh, and especially when you're seven in the morning and you have to like go to university or work and you're, you know, the last thing you're interested in is, is being part of the world, you know? So you have your cup of coffee in your hand and you start going into the subway and it's like, a, it's alive and it wakes you up and it's, it's uh, informative and it's a bit of, a bit of infotainment. And you go, when you go downstairs in the piazza, for example, the first thing is all the tiles, which are really conventional tiles that remind you of Paris or New York subway stations, you know, these kind of white tiles. They all have text written on them. There's 2,000 words there that never existed 30 years ago. So all those words, every day you walk down there, you're going to kind of see some words that are, you know, that are our new global vocabulary, that are an international language that we all use. So that's just the beginning. You come into a space that is extremely amorphous inside, and uh, the way it's lit and everything, and there's a massive sculpture I did called Seven Sins, and it's sitting there, this object, the Seven Sin object, which is quite nice because it, 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 uh, it's cantilevered the way it looks. The floors are, are, have all these changing digital prints on them, and these digital prints are embedded in the ceramic, and the ceramic tile technology, we had to find a company and experiment for six months to try to get the, 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 the patterns embedded nine or eight millimeter into the ceramics so those tiles would last at least 40 years for foot traffic. Um, so what I love, and I love these kind of projects, and I think this comes from my industrial design background actually, is that I love the idea of A, finding new technologies to build and to do things with, uh, but also that there's so much rigorous criteria, like in public spaces there's so much to worry about. Just like if I design a, a, a bottle for Pepsi-Cola or somebody, it's I've got so many criteria that a lot of times I find I'm more creative the more criteria I have. It's like pushing me and pushing me. It's pushing me to really challenge myself and really do something. So I, I get you know, thrilled about it. Rashid is diverse portfolio ranges from luxury goods, furniture, lightning technology, surface design, brand identity to packaging. There are no set limits to its diversity because Rashid defines the art of design to be about being smart when addressing human behavior. His trademark comprises principal design elements such as flowing lines, futuristic forms, vivid shapes, and vivid colors. For the longest time, design only existed for the elite and for a small insular culture. I've worked hard for the last 20 years trying to make design a public subject. These were the quotes and the opinions of Rashid. In his opinion, art should never look into the past, but always analyze the present to improve the future. His work cannot create anything new if it does not push bound areas. Through this, Rashid wishes to contribute to the world by enhancing its improvement. 
To adapt his design to everyday life, he analyzes human coexistence. The artists addressed the necessity of the living space to react flexibly to the user's changing needs. He offers a proposal for a modular, adaptive, 10-piece sofa system, which creates spaces both in the singular and above all in the plural through diverse combination possibilities. Rashid's style is characterized by pop or pastel tones, bold combinations and glossy liquid finishes. He favors the plastic and solid surfaces that can be colored and printed at well, channeling the soft and vivid forms that distinguish his work. He is managing now his private studio in New York and his artwork is exhibited in numerous temporary and permanent exhibitions all over the world, including the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He is widely seen as a celebrity of design. Karim was also inspired by his father, who was a creative renaissance man. He saw him create every single day. He would design furniture, make dresses for his mom, paint canvases, design sets for television and film, and constantly take them to museums to enrich their cultural background. He is also a frequent guest of the most important newspapers and magazines in the West, such as Financial Times, New York Times, and others, even outside the United States. In fact, Rashid was able to chart a unique path for himself. His privacy is represented in the uniqueness and charm of his works in all their diversities, at a time, they are close to everyone, matching with all tastes and enjoying harmony with all trends. Strange, funny, and attractive shapes, shining in amazing bright colors to form a unique world and a unique atmosphere that is mastered with great skill by the designer. Thus, his geometric and decorative designs are genuine different, far from the traditional ways, but you cannot miss the feeling that they are inspired from the past and have the ability to take you to new horizons of art, of contemporary vision that establishes an environmental harmony that's not hidden from the eye, even in its smallest details. The smallest details, the finest details, made him in all his works, a story of success.